Deontay Wilder, the legs didn't look there. You know, he was gun shy, wouldn't let the right hand go. Bring it on. Yeah. Battle of Britain, I want to see AJ and Dubois. September the 21st, why not? He has to focus on one man and one man only, Sugar Hill, because that's the trainer, that's the guy that he spends all the time with. He was a, a shadow, a shell of his former self, Deontay Wilder, and it was really sad to see. We had Frank Warren on Talk Sport. Frank said, Spence, you know as much as me. Welcome to episode number 75 of Talk Boxing with myself, Spencer Oliver, and the one, the only, Mr. Adam Smith. Adam, how are you, mate? I'm fine. I'm just off a plane like you are, <laughs> having had a, a crackling week in, in, in Saudi. It was a fabulous, uh, innovative uh, idea, tournament, competition uh, between Frank and Eddie. Uh, great fights, uh, terrific build-up, and... Uh, yeah, it was good, wasn't it, being on the ground and a great week for TalkSport. It really was. I mean, like you said, literally, you say when we just got off the plane, it was literally a couple of hours ago, myself and yourself. Different flights. Yeah, different flights. She was an hour after me, right? I had to sit next to big Izzy Asif on the yeah, plane. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Not the most comfortable, but yeah. we got through it. <laughs> well, I slept on the plane all the way through. He slept on me, I think. Yeah, I slept all the way, mate, and um, so I feel nice and fresh today. But look, we've got to talk. Let's start about the event. I mean... What a great event it was. It was, and uh, I couldn't wait to be there, actually, Spencer. I mean, the rivalry goes way back, as longer than even you and I have been involved in the sport. Uh, you know, Barry Hearn uh, initially, then obviously his son, Eddie Frank, the, the maestro promoter for so many years, the icon, the Hall of Famer. Then comes the whippersnapper, Eddie Hearn, up with that magnificent sort of golden era of boxing between 2010 and, and 2019, those sort of times, the big sky nights, and... And they hated each other. There, there, was, there was so much uh, savage, uh, acrimonious, nasty. I mean, I was witnessing it sort of on both mm. sides, particularly Eddie. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't believe when they finally shook hands at a press conference in London. Then they were working under the, the umbrella, Turkey al Sheik brilliantly putting everybody together. George Warren, Spencer Brown, Frank Smith in the background, making it happen. And then, of course, it goes one step further, 5v5. What a terrific idea. Teams, a little bit like the Ryder Cup. Mm. They, they're all getting, because you know as a fighter, it's a lonely mm. business, isn't it? Absolutely. Look, I mean, I wanted to ask you about that, about the format, the longevity of it. You think it's something that could work. I mean, as we saw there on Saturday night, and we will break it down, we'll go through the fights in a bit. But, you know, I think the format itself does work. And I think there is longevity in it. I think that team competition reminded me a little bit of when I went back to the amateurs and you're boxing for your country and you, you sort of unite together and it gives you that extra little incentive to do that. And you felt that out there with these two teams. You know, it really did match from Queensbury. There was like, forget the individual stuff that was going on. It felt like a team event as well. And it added something a little bit different and it, and it freshened boxing up in many ways. I was thinking absolutely back to Tokyo and that Team GB captain by Fraser Clark with them all supporting each other. Other. And it is a difficult, individual, uh, lonely sport mm. where you're going to have to be so sort of focused and single-minded on your goals. And still the fighters had the individual goals, all in big fights. But yes, I think Hamza Shiraz loved captain and Team Queensbury. Deontay Wilder, the, the, the most bizarre captain of Matram after all their hatred over the years with Shelley Finkel, Eddie Hearn, AJ and Wilder that never happened. And I think, yes, the camaraderie getting behind him. I mean, Eddie's Churchillian speech at the press conference was unbelievable. It really was. You're getting spanked. Yeah. I mean, look what happened. It backfired hugely. But the whole build-up was, was wonderful. And uh, in their team shirts and Frank with this sort of slightly quieter way of, of, uh, of, of building them up. And, and Eddie with the sort of brash, you know, let's go. It was see the passion, the heart. I think all the fighters loved yeah. it. Seeing big Zhilai Zhang next to little Nick Ball together and uh, <laughs> Willie Hutchinson and Nick Ball having some fun. And I think it was great. And the point system was fantastic. Mm. And of course, on the night, it was a whitewash, but it's a great formula and it's entertaining. And that yeah. is what the fans want. No one expected that 5 0 or 10 0 with the extra points, with the knockouts, etc. And the, and the Captain's captain's pick was key, wasn't Cap it? Yeah, absolutely. But firstly, did you expect the whitewash, which I didn't? No. I think I picked 4 1 in favour 
of Frank Warren. I thought the fights, were, they were very competitive. I got it totally and I, utterly wrong. I, I was 4-1 in favour. The only one I got wrong was Craig, Craig Richards. Actually. I think I was the other way. I, 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 was, I was really out with the fights. But I think that people were changing their minds all the way through the week, which mm. was the, the beauty of it. I thought Craig Richards would probably win. I sort of picked Ford slightly. That was a fabulous fight. I thought Hamza Shiraz would win. And then the, the, I fancied sort of Hergovic, and you didn't know with Wilder and Zhang. But yeah, a few upsets on the card, some dramatic performances, some big wins for British fighters. Yeah, it was a great night. And, and I think it can go again in all sorts of different yeah. ways. Six against six, seven against seven, different promoters, different countries, maybe all sorts of ways. Yeah. But, but Turkey is doing something different. He's putting on nights that are memorable, yeah. that are magical, that we, we can't, we, we never thought, would we? We're now talking about what will happen in September. Maybe AJ against Dubois or a AJ against Zhang. These sort of fights would take in a year, two mm. years, three years to make. Maybe not made like AJ Wilder was never made. Yeah. And they're now being done like that. It's great for the fans. And most importantly, it's great for the fighters who are being paid mm. so handsomely. But let's get into the show. Let's break down the fights. Zhele Zhang. Let's start with Zhele Zhang, Deontay Wilder. Now, for me, Deontay Wilder... You know, it sort of underlined what I thought anyway. After the Joseph Parker performance, you looked at that and you go, you know what, that's not a bad night. The fight has seriously left him. And I picked Zhang to win in this contest for that because I thought, looking at it, no, it wasn't, you know, you can see when it, it's a young man's sport, really. He got old overnight, you know, and that, that for me is what it was. I thought it was a sad spectacle, you know, and I think that boxing history is steeped with this in boxing. You know, where fighters go on maybe just a little bit too long. The trilogy with the, the, um, Tyson Fury, for me, took a lot out of him. Like it did with going back to the days of the 90s with Riddick Bow and Evander Holyfield. Bow never really the same after that trilogy. Then, then trilogies really... You know, I mean, Adam, you've covered so many of them. The trilogies take so much out of fighters. And I think that, yeah, Joseph Parker was a different... Diff um, it was an upsetting performance for me from Deontay Wilder. You thought, you know, maybe that's the time... What we saw there with Zele Zhang, he come out, taking nothing away from Zhang, he'd done what he had to do, but Deontay Wilder, the legs didn't look there, you know, he was gun shy, wouldn't let the right hand go, shell of his former self, and a sad way to end, really. I hope it has ended. Time waits for no man, Spencer, and, and that's the unfortunate part of, of boxing sometimes, and occasionally the fighters just don't know, they just mm. don't realise, and... We see it from, from the outside and, and we can't really say you have to retire or tell fighters what to do. But he was a, a shadow, a shell of his former self, Deontay Wilder. And it was really sad to see we were watching together on the platform. And yeah, his, his timing wasn't there. He looked gun shy. The right hand just couldn't be delivered. I thought he looked a little bow legged mm. actually, which he is normally, normally a sign of, of a fighter that's gone on too long. His performance against Joe Parker was terrible. And I think we all thought maybe he could sort of just get that one big right hand off. But he didn't seem to have any confidence or fear. And that's what Deontay Wilder used to do, strike fear into everybody mm. with the most concussive right hand probably since back in the Ernie Shaver sort of days, George mm. Foreman, that sort of power. We haven't seen that in this modern generation, but I totally agree with you about trilogies. We've seen Bo and Holyfield and, you know, where they, they, sh they sort of, they share souls and yeah. spirituality in there and there's huge respect after them, but they, they have these three big fights back in the day, Ali and Frazier, of course, Barrera and Morales mm. was another one. And, and I think with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, especially that second fight, which was an amazing performance by Tyson yeah. Fury in Vegas. That took a lot out of Deontay. Then the third one, we saw it against Parker. And yeah, it was really sad. I thought it was a sad end to what was an amazing night and almost took away what Zhilai Zhang did, which was fantastic. And yeah. I loved him backstage afterwards with Big Bang and, you know, and having how, some, how having some was fun. It was, but he was great. It was mm. great. And I think Zhilai Zhang did brilliantly because he did really well against Joseph Parker for the first four or five rounds. And yeah. then he sort of went to sleep, but he was lighter this time and I thought he was right on, on, on song and he mm. just you know, he walked down marched down outclassed Wilder were too fresh and too good and now puts himself in this magic mix and what it is of, of, of heavyweights mm. we know that the big rematch 
December 21st between Alexander Usyk, the new undisputed champion, and Tyson Fury. We've got AJ against probably Daniel Dubois in a battle of Britain September the 21st. And where does Zhilai Zhang fit in? Now, he could fight the winner of either of those. He mm. could step in and fight AJ now. I mean, there's other fights to be made. There is Parker again, possibly. Um, and a guy I do like as well is uh, Caballel, Ajit Caballel. I think he's coming up the quiet way. He's a small heavyweight, but he's put on a couple of terrific performances. Mm. Um, it's a great time for, for heavyweight boxing. It's, it's about modern eras, isn't it, and creating legacies. And, and, and to do that, the best have to fight the best. And I think in recent times, we haven't seen that because of the politics of the sport. Different broadcasters, 60-40 splits, fighters not happy with what they're receiving, etc. That's all gone now. And we are going to get the super fights that we want. And for the, for the boxing fan, they're going to get the fights that they want. And the, the great thing is, Adam that it's not just staying in Saudi. We're going to London. Mm -hmm. You know, Turkey Al Sheikh was talking about travelling to different states, areas, different, August 3rd. different country. August 3rd, Terence Crawford. You know, so... But you're it, right what really you're good. saying about how difficult it was. Sort of Sky and Eddie, and then there was Frank, BT. Yeah. It, it was split. No it was, one wanted to work with It anyone. was different, yeah. And AJ mm. was doing his own thing. And, of course, it looks like we've lost out on, on AJ Wilder because, you know, it, it looks like Deontay is at the end. And, and that's a shame, but... That sometimes happens in boxing. We never got Lennox Lewis and, and Riddick Bowe. We never yeah. got Hatton, Witter, Frotch, Calzaghe. Other fights that went by the wayside, but sometimes it doesn't work. What we're getting now, though, is many more fights that mm. are happening. And that's what we've got to celebrate. How sad is it that we didn't get Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua? It's a fight that we all crave for. They were the two biggest names. I mean... Deontay Wilder re really relit the heavyweight division with that explosive power. You know, you needed someone exciting like that. Fought with his heart on his sleeve and went out there and, you know, was was exciting to watch. And AJ was obviously coming through. That's the fight we really wanted. We haven't got. I'm with you, Adam. I think that now, speaking to Shelley Finkel actually yesterday morning in the, uh, in the hotel, and he said, look, he's devastated. He's up in his room still. No one's seen him yet, Deontay Wilder. He said, but... It's possibly the end. Shelley's been you know, around a long time. He's a great hasn't he? guy, Shelley, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's been around obviously the days of Holyfield and, and Klitschko's. He was involved with so many, and he's taken Deontay Wilder all the way, Olympic bronze medalist, through his career. Some some wonderful, devastating performances. But it looks like we won't have AJ Wilder, and that's the unpredictability of our crazy sport, particularly with the heavyweights. There was it was a plan for AJ Wilder, Joshua fought Otto Valin. But unfortunately, Deontay mm. didn't do his part of the bargain yeah. against Joe Parker, which was a career best performance from Parker with a beautiful game plan from Andy Lee. And of course, it doesn't happen. Then it's almost reignited. If Wada had, had, had knocked out Zhilai Zhang, then it would have been, Turkey Al Sheik said on the night, it would have been AJ Wilder in September. But alas, you can't make these things happen. And that is why we're, we're compelled by our sport. Yeah. I mean, who would have won that fight in their... In, in their heyday well, in their at uh, the prime of their careers who do you think would have won AJ Deontay Wilder a, a, where would you a, have gone? AJ AJ more um organized a better boxer um more to him um better jab just just I, I think probably would have stopped Deontay Wilder mid to late rounds however we saw at times in AJ's career, especially around the, the Andy Ruiz knockout, obviously, um, the vulnerability. He got hit by Dillian White and hurt. There's no question that Deontay Wilder could have knocked uh, Anthony Joshua out. No question. Mm. But I would just have picked AJ with that one. Zhele Zhang, where does he go next? What does he do? Who does he fight? You know, you mentioned all the names there in the yeah. heavyweights. Cabriel would be a night, like one that I would like to see. Coming off good win against Sanchez, that sort of makes sense. Well, Cabriel might, might go with Joe Parker, more sort of yeah. same sort of size. It's, it's difficult for Zhele Zhang, big guy. Um, you know, the, you've got Joe Joyce, Derek Jazora happening. You've got... Uh, so many heavyweight possibilities. Mm. I think Zhilei Zhang can just take a little rest. He's had a couple of performances, the, the 12 rounder with Parker. He's, had, he's fought against against Wilder. If he comes out this year, maybe again on, on the October bill that we haven't talked about yet, but Tebby Evan Bivol, which will happen October 12th yep. or December 21st, maybe he'll be on that, um, the main, you know, support to uh, Usyk and Fury's rematch against, yeah, possibly a Caballel, um, possibly a, a Parker again. I spoke to Parker out there, by the way. Can possibly he Dubois. Out, we don't know yeah. what's going to happen. It, there's, there's, yeah. There are endless possibilities. It's like a magic mix, isn't it, of, of heavyweights, of but which you can no pick two or three out. And 
No confusion, no politics. Like what I'm no saying politics. Is, they're all there. Joseph Parker would turn up, he flew in. Dillian, 21 White, hours. Dillian White's still floating around as well. Dillian's there as well, yeah. 21 hours off the plane, Joseph Parker. Joe, what's happening? Where are we going? Don't know, that's why I'm here. Need to know who I'm fighting next. I'm happy to fight anybody. This is where it is. And it, the fights are literally being made like that. Joe Parker pitching up Jai Opatire as well. We saw he was just flown in. Yeah. And, you know, they, they sort of have to be there, don't they, yeah. to find out who yeah. they're fighting next. You know, hi, yeah. Turkey. What's what's next up for me? And it's they're all big fights, but they know they're getting well paid. Mm. And that's the, that's the beauty of this for the yeah. fighters. It's great. Daniel Dubois, got oh. to talk about him. We've oh. done Charles. Obviously, we've got a history together, myself and Don, going back a long, long way. I know how hard Daniel's worked at this. You know, it's always been, the, you know, it's not been the physicalities with him. He's always had that. But the psychological side, the mindset with Daniel, you know, people talk a lot about, was Joe Joyce, that, is that his level now? He's coming off that Joe Joyce defeat and where was he going to go? Would he grow? He's 26 years of age. People forget that about Daniel. Still a very young fighter. And I think for me... Alexander Usyk going out there, you know, in Poland, putting up the performance he did against Usyk. That was actually the moulding of him. That was actually the making of Daniel, believing, actually, I belong at this level. And I think the team up with Don Charles has been brilliant. They've been together now three fights. Going in there, Filip Hergovic, he was the underdog. I actually picked Daniel to win the fight, not just because of the connection with him. I just thought that stylistically he would do it. And he, and he proved me right. I mean, what a performance from Daniel Dubois. What did you think? I thought Hergovic was the favourite, and, and rightly so beforehand. Um, if he'd boxed with that, that big uh, pumping jab and, and, and more like the Hergovic of old. But he's a strange fighter, Philip Hergovic. He went walkabout in the, uh, in the Zhilai Zhang matchup that I thought he lost. And, and he was strange. It reminded me, Spencer, you'll remember him, of Andrew Golota, uh, the Polish fighter who, I, I mean, once or twice he almost turned his back on, on mm. a fight and, and he could surprise people. He was a strange character. Hergovic, similar. You can't get a lot out of him. He's a scary man. And um, I thought that he would... You know, put up a better performance, take nothing away from it was fabulous from Daniel Dubois. Mm. Totally agree with you. I spent a bit of time with Don Charles lately. Totally agree that the psychology, the, the mental side of Daniel Dubois has always been difficult, right? He's he's been Frank Warren said, do not ever question his heart again. Yeah. People were asking those questions after Joe Joyce, again with Alexander Rusik, which I thought was a great performance, but he showed a lot of bottle against big Jarrell Miller. He did. And I think Turkey Al Sheik and all the Saudis really liked Daniel Dubois from that performance. Speaking to Don, they knew what they had to do against Hergovic a long time since they sparred, many, many years. They knew they had to, to take a few, to get inside, to, to really break his heart. And that's what happened. Hergovic, I told you up on the platform we had with TalkSport, great platform, by the way, overlooking the ring, mm. fantastic. I told you, after two rounds, Hergovic was puffing. Mm. He was sat down on his, in his stool, almost slumped, two rounds in yeah. to a big fight. And Daniel just carried on, chipping away. He was there, centre ring, right at the beginning of each round, ready to go again. Game plan was fantastic. He looked physically in great shape. He looked Mentally, he seemed brilliant. And what I loved about it, not just the win and how happy the team were, but Daniel's interview afterwards mm. with Chris Maddox, it was refreshing. It was it almost was. like there was a weight off his shoulders. He was talking better than I've heard him. He was smiling. He's announced himself at, as you said, just 26 Bring it on. Yeah. Battle of Britain, I want to see. AJ and Dubois, September the 21st. Why not? It happens. It happens. That fight, I think, is very much in the making. Both teams are sort of like there or thereabouts. They want that fight. Great for British boxing. It will probably be for the vacant IBF title. They're just waiting for Alexander Usyk to relinquish that. So he's interim champion now. And that's the strange part of it. You, you, you have 25 years to wait for an undisputed heavyweight mm. champion. Alexander Usyk becomes that man. Brilliant performance mm. against in a very good fight against Tyson Fury. They have the rematch. But a belt then slips away and it's crowned another champion. Mm. That's the, the politics, the difficulties of the sport. Yeah. You wonder when, at some point, 
the money may be and the aim and the ambition of Turkey Al Sheik might just say, hang on a minute, let's just round this up. A little bit like UFC style yeah. and just try and tidy things up. Because it is for the for the fan, the casual fan watching, they've got a world heavyweight champion at last and his name is Alexander Usyk. No doubt, mm. every belt, the Ring magazine, a couple of other treasures that he got home. Yeah. I don't know how he got it all back actually on the plane. But Alexander Usyk <laughs> is the world heavyweight champion and now you have possibly another world heavyweight yeah. champion. That's the confusion with it. We know how it works. Listen, And if it's yeah. for the IBF title, it is. What I just want to see is the fight. AJ and Dubois sparred many, many times in Team GB. People will favour AJ for the rejuvenation under Ben Davidson, but look at that connection that Don Charles and Daniel Dubois have. He's a younger man. He'll have nothing to fear, Dubois. I say bring it on. It's a cracker. Listen, Daniel Dubois and Philip Hergovic go back, as you say, sparred many years ago, and we know that the rumours coming out of camp there. Our Philip Hergovic really schooled this young fighter uh, many, many times. So going in there, Hergovic, going in there, oozing confidence, thought he was going to take the centre ring, carrying that left hand low. Too low. Tactically got it wrong. Don Charles got it spot on. He they did. worked on certain stuff, which I know they were doing. And um, yeah, Daniel went out there. And I think Hergovic was surprised by the approach of Daniel. He took the fight to him straight away. Combination punching, putting him under pressure, making him work when he didn't want to work. And that was the difference. And that's why... And he knew he'd rounds, have to take some shots. Absolutely. And he did. After two rounds, he looked at him and you go... He's starting to blow a little bit. And I saw him, actually, Philip Mergovic, saw him just a few hours ago at the airport. And um, he'd flown into London. Cut badly, wasn't oh, he? Adam, it was really sad, really. And I went up to him because we have a relationship over the years and whatnot. Anyway, I said, look, Philip, it's the way it goes. The game, you go, you go back to the drawing board. And it's like a loss sometimes, the making of a fighter. It's how you come back. Not, not, not the loss, how you come back from that. All the great fighters lose. Of course. He said, listen, I'm all right. I'm fine. You know, I'm disappointed with the way it is, but that's the way it is. I'll go back and I'll come again. He's 31 years of age. Still a future for Hergovic. Lennox Lewis getting knocked out by Oliver McCall at yeah. Wembley. Coming back. Took ages to get that WBC belt, didn't it? Fat so long under Manny Stewart. Then he lost again to Hassim Rackman. But, you know, he, he exacted revenge mm. both times and became the greatest heavyweight we've, we've ever seen mm. in Britain, certainly. Sure. And, and I think that there's time for Hergovic to come back. I think that he, he just didn't fight the right fight at all. Um, and as I said, he, he just doesn't mentally maybe seem quite happy because, as we know, a happy fighter makes a dangerous mm. fighter and Dubois is settled. Joe Parker, one of the great stories in the last year, year and a half, under this new sort of rejuvenation yeah. and rebuilding of, of, of heavyweight boxing because he's kept busy, he's got a great trainer, he's got a great relationship and he's happy and confident in himself. And that's what it seemed like Daniel Dubois was on Saturday yeah. night. Well, look, for Philip Mergovic, maybe that stoked the fire again. Maybe he goes back, he comes back bigger, better, stronger. And that's what we need for this heavyweight division right now. I'd well, love to see him against Zhilai Zhang one day. Well, listen, I, th I think that will probably see, that will happen again, mm -hmm. I'm sure. But look, while we're on the heavyweights, the big fight announced, which you've already mentioned, December the 21st, Turkey Al Sheikh mentioned it out there. We get the rematch. We Alexander do. Usyk, Tyson Fury. Can he do it? What does he need to do? Has he got the adaptability? You're asking all the right questions. Can he do it? Of course he can do it. I think I've got all the right answers as well. I just want to ask you. <laughs> he, can, he can do it. It's heavyweight boxing. And it, it, was, it was, for me, a win for Alexander Usyk, maybe by three rounds. But it was close. There were, there were times in the fight where Tyson Fury was in control, round four, mm. five, six, seven. The middle rounds, he got it right. I thought he started too slow. Take nothing away, though, from Usyk's beginning because he was quick to cut off the ring. He was fantastic, just like he was with Joshua in the first fight at Spurs. He took away that jab. He cut the corners. His movement was brilliant. His body shots were fantastic, Usyk. So Fury's got to go back to the drawing board. Obviously, there's been a lot of criticism about the corner. I can't criticise Sugar Hill, nephew of Emmanuel Stewart, wonderful trainer, or Andy Lee, who I think is one of the best people I think the in boxing. I think the is there too many voices? You're a fighter. Yeah. You're a fighter. Most fighters tell me... They they want one voice in the corner, that right? 100%. Well, it's going on in the fight. Let's, let's use the Knight Brown as an example. He goes down, he's got a massive crisis going on. He's in desperate trouble. The bell rings, saves him, he gets back. We know the powers of recovery of Tyson Fury. You sit down, you need calm. Calm, you don't need one voice here, one voice here, there. Another voice coming in there, like, it's, it's still confusing the brain. You know, like, you've, gone, you've been through a tough time over the last three minutes. You come in, you need calm, you need 
focus, you need direction, you need discipline, all those things. That comes from that one single trainer. So too many voices is not a good thing. And I thought perhaps that's something that Tyson needs to look at, a shake up with that. You know, not saying that he needs to take anybody out of the team, just, just make sure that everybody's got it. You can understand the corner because emotions are involved. He's got his father in there, you know, and, and emotions take over and people say things and jump up. Daniel Dubois' dad does the same thing. You know, I can understand that, but to change it, it's got to change. It's got, they, they've got to stay out of the corner. He has to focus on one man and one man only, Sugar Hill, because that's the trainer. That's the guy that he spends all the time with. That's the voice that he needs to hear. I think he can win the fight. I, I think he can ring Well, physically, he's got the attributes. Yeah. He's got to get back behind the jab. He didn't really use the jab well enough. The, the, the long right hands were good. The uppercuts, I think, are a key shot. But he can't showboat. He's got mm. to get on with it. He knows he's the bigger man. He's got the skill set. There is a question, though, that has... We talked about Deontay Wilder. Has the trilogy taken a little bit out of Tyson Fury mm. as well? He was poor against Ngannou. He lost against Usyk. And Alexander Usyk, in my opinion, the great fighter in the cruiserweight heavyweight divisions of our generation, yeah. no doubt. Three, three, five amateur wins, cleaned up in a tough cruiserweight class, beat everybody on the road mostly, then goes back, fights in the front line for his beloved Ukraine, comes in, beats, no one said after Derek Chisora. After Derek Chisora, people were saying, no way could he go up and beat the super heavyweights. I mean, mm. the super-sized ones. He's, he's beaten AJ twice. He's beaten Tyson Fury. He goes in favourite for the rematch. Yeah. No, no reason why he can't do it again. It's Fury who's got to change things. It's fascinating because it was a great fight first time around. So the answer is Fury can do it. Will he? Don't know. Alexander Usyk, for me, a very, very special fighter. He has to go down as an all-time great, right? All -time I mean, he has great to go... For me, and, it, and Terence Crawford, wasn't that great when he mm. came out this week and said, you've got to say, in the mythical yeah. list, he's number one. He's ahead of me. He's ahead yeah. of Inouye. He's ahead of them all. Alexander Usyk is number one. What he's done and achieved, amateur professional, and then now a heavyweight, unbelievable. Jaya Patai was telling us mm. he wants to do it at cruiserweight and heavyweight. I mean, it's a huge ask. It's a massive undertaking. We saw it with Evander Holyfield, legend back in the day. Mm. Take it to Riddick Bowe. But Usyk still hasn't been beaten. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Well, listen, talking about pound-for-pound pound stars, two pound-for-pound pound stars that were meant to be topping the bill on Saturday night was Artur Betabiev and Dmitry Bivol. Unfortunately, the fight fell through. Artur Betabiev picking up an injury. The fight gets announced. We get it. October the 12th, Artur Betabiev, Dmitry Bivol. The fight, I mean, that's one of the best fights in boxing, right? I loved it when Turkey Al Sheikh announced that October the 12th with his arms around Dmitry Bivol's children. Kids in the ring. And... Just fantastic yeah. to see. And Bivol is one of my very, very favourite fighters. Does I he think... beat Artur Betabiev? I think, I think he does. I think I've always said it. I think he's, he's an exquisite fighter, Dmitry Bivol. I think his timing, I think his feet are beautiful to watch. But how his does he control the power? His defense is great. Yeah, he's a monster. His defense, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's just it. say Dimitri Bivol comes in and it's a short notice opponent. <laughs> it yes, is. it's levels and we said levels would, would work out and that's exactly what happened. I had Bivol on points. You rightly said Bivol would stop him mm. and, and he was great. He was fantastic and what I love about Dimitri Bivol is all business. Okay, There's no slip-ups. There's no banana skins before the big one. He got down and he delivered and executed fantastic He's a wonderful fighter. People forget about his power. Yes, he was knocking them out at a lower level, but a lot of distance fights, that's what happens when you fight the best, mm. when you fight the elite. Artur Batebiev is a fantastic fighter. He's a wonderful, powerful, humongous, incredible light heavyweight, shape of him, and he can box terrifically as well. But for me, the edge in boxing ability is with Bivol. Look what he did to Canelo, I think... I think, I'm not sure, maybe I'll change nearer the fight, that Bivol would just have a little bit too much. What, what Bivol is great at doing and what makes him so great is the way that he controls that space. He's just in and out of range, but he's making the fight work when he doesn't work. How a well bit does he like judge the distance? Usyk. Like Usyk, incredible. how well? Incredible, it really is. Look, want to move through the card. Hamza Suraz, Amo Williams. Coming of age fight, really, for both of them. Suraz coming off. Um, that good win against Liam Williams. And you say, was Williams at that stage of his career where the timing was right? Well, he was in against a live opponent there in Ammo Williams, the big American hope. Wow, what a performance. Good start from Williams, but Shiraz, you know, from the third round onwards, really took over slowly, systematically, 
broke him down, stole his heart, stole his soul in many ways. 11th round KO. What a performance from Suraz. Well, you were hanging out with Philip Hergovic and Shelley Finkel a few hours ago. I was hanging out with Team <laughs> Hamza Shiraz and all his friends, and they had a big party afterwards. And they were telling me about how he was as an amateur, a good amateur, but, but never sort of the elite. And he's done things the hard way. He's taken himself off to America. I think Hamza Shiraz is an absolute star in the making. I love him. I think outside of the ring, he's a gentleman. He's exactly the sort of fighter that is an inspiration to the kids. He's also a terrific ring technician. He's got a beautiful jab. We've seen him take on the levels. You know, he dispatched Liam Williams in style. He moves up again. And, and I think just ammo was awkward and difficult and took the fight to him. And in that second round, there was a problem for Shiraz. What I loved was the way that he was classy. He dealt with it. He kept his cool. He's got that lovely sort of ring generalship, hasn't he? The way he controls it. He looks big in there for a middleweight. That lovely jam, mm. the, the beautiful executed punches. Yeah, he was fantastic. The way he, he, took, he took that sort of second round and he turned it around. He went back to his corner, dealt with it moved on. I love what I feel. There's a, there's, a, there's a great rhythm to Hamza Shiraz. They're talking about Chris Eubank Jr. as a big fight. If it's Battle of Britain, if it's AJ Dubois and Eubank and Shiraz, what a night we have in store September the 21st. Yeah, I really like that fight. I think Hamza Shiraz is going to become a world champion. He won the, uh, the Young Fighter of the Year with the Boxing Writers Club mm. a few years ago, which I've been heavily involved in. We loved him then. We still love him now. He's He's, we say it's about timing and levels. He's dealing with each level efficiently, yeah. beautifully. And the timing for him is now. Well, Hamza that, Shiraz becomes a world champion. Yeah, I, I truly believe that as well. I think that, you know, that against Adam, Adam Ammo Williams, you go, right, the winner of this, I think, kicks on, wins a world title. There was that opportunity there for Shiraz if he wins, possibly Wembley with, with Eubank. That is the fight that I think I see him in, in next. In the game, it's all part of his development. But I think he's a, he's a world champion in, in the waiting. I think that we've been thinking that a long time. Reminds me a lot of Tommy Hearns in the early days. My tall, hero. Strong, like good good inside worker. For a guy that's so tall, his inside work is insane. That's a insane. big comparison to my hero, the legendary yeah. Tommy Hearns, who I cried I, when he lost to Marvin Hagler. Uh, he's, he's got a long way to go, Hamza Shiraz, till he's that sort of level. But I like what I see. Reminds me of him, I like what I see. I like mm. what I see, Spencer. And I think that it was a masterstroke, a stroke of genius from Frank Warren to make him captain, to get the double points. Because, of course, we had the upset with Willie Hutchinson against Craig Richards, as yeah. I'm sure we'll come on to. Nick Ball, they have momentum. And then fight number three, bang, the captain goes in and delivers. Frank Warren Raising at his spirits. best. At Raises his best. the spirits. Brilliant. Let's move on to Nick Ball, Ray Ford. Great Another fight. tough fight for Nick Ball, coming off that um, draw against Vargas, a fight that many felt he'd won, he felt disappointed. I spoke to him in the build-up to that one, so listen, how are you feeling about it? He should be WBC champion, now fighting for the WBA. It should be a unification. He went, Spence, I'm just gone. That's history. I put it in the past. I'm now focusing on that. I love his mindset. Great attitude. Yeah, great attitude. You know, and, and he goes, look, I know what I've got to do. I know how good this kid is. There's big talk in America that he is the next superstar yep. of the sport. And we go there, first bell rings. Ray Ford comes out. He's nice and composed. Nick Ball done what he does so good. He's so, so determined. Like, he just keeps pushing on, pushing on. Doesn't let anything break his spirit. And that's basically what he done was sort of, got in the face of Ford, got into that space where he needed to be. Brilliant with those right uppercuts on the inside. Right on that the was inside. He was throwing combinations of four and five, finishing on the uppercut. That was the difference between winning and losing. Getting going today. again. I like oh, this. I'm warming up, mate, because we're getting near my I weight see those group those uppercuts. Now. Getting near my weight group. I like and it. I, we had a little in interview afterwards. And do you know what else I like about Nick Ball? He's possibly only one of the only... <laughs> Only guys I've ever met were smaller than me. You knew what I was going with, didn't I? <laughs> Made me feel really good. Like, it was like, but, do you remember A.D. Lewis, the little mighty atom? I boxed him. Yeah, and, also, and also Charlie Shepard. Those yeah. guys, but yeah. they had like a steamroller's attitude. What I mm. like about Nick Ball, he's got skill set to go he with that energy. A lot of like, boxing IQ there. He's not just a, a wrecking ball, he's which not. he calls himself. He's not just a workhorse. It's a great, it's a great name for absolutely. him because he doesn't stop. Yeah. The Duracell battery, the energy. When he came up to the Talk Sports studio afterwards, mm. he wanted to do another 20. 
12 rounds. Yeah, he did. Looked fresh as a daisy. I love that fight because Ray Ford was really good as well. At times, you could see the class. He oozed it, yeah. Ray Ford. Fabulous body shots. Lovely the way he put his punches together. But I just gave it to Nick Ball by a smidgen. It was a really tight fight. It was very close. I wouldn't have minded it if it had gone either way. But I'm glad for Nick because he was unlucky against Ray Vargas. And to become a world champion, mm. he's a great, great little fighter. I, I see that again. I think that's a rematch that can happen. Ray Ford will probably work a little bit harder. I think he was just a little bit complacent at times, just, just a little yeah. bit lackadaisical. He put his moves together beautifully from that southpaw stance, but it's a great clash of styles. It was yeah. always the fight that I was looking forward to most, and it delivered. Yeah. Cracker. Wonderful fight. Ray Ford tweeted yesterday saying, 1.30, here I come. I think there was, it was evident he was struggling to make the weight. We was out there. It was very hot out yeah. there, 40, 42 degrees. He was training with a sweatsuit on. That caught my eye straight away, and that's why I went for Nick Ball. I went, look, Nick. But that rematch could happen, couldn't it? I no, mean, it was, yeah, absolutely. It could happen. Yeah. It could happen. But I mean, yeah, but I think the rematch with Vargas will happen. I yes. think just go, that's what will happen next. Spoke to Nick about that and he said, I want to go over. I don't know how Vargas makes right the weight. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, we can see that. Nick started evident. too late in that fight. I Second. thought Vargas, Vargas was good first half and it was close. I mean, yeah, yeah a lot of people said it was a, it was a, it, Nick should have won. Maybe, but it, it was it was tight. I thought Ball won that one. I'll it, give him, it was give tight. Him my rounds. It was tight. And, and I think if he started a bit earlier, anyway, what I like yeah. is what you said about his attitude and about the fact he says, that's done. It's history. Yeah. What's past is history, right? Let's get on with it. Get in with, with uh, uh, Ray Ford and deal with what's in front of me. He dealt with Ray Ford. He's a world champion. It's a fabulous story for, for Nick, yeah. for Everton, for the, for the club. Um, I just love it. It's super great. Superstar. Super, super scouser. Superstar in the making. I really believe that. I think that now we see Ford move up. We get the unification. WBC, WBA. Nick Ball versus Ray Vargas in a rematch. And I think that's what Nick Ball wants. And what a great fight that is. Bring it on. We Let's want to it. see that rematch. We want to see Nick Ball. We want to see Nick Ball every week. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, he could fight every week. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, coming of age fight. Willie Hutchinson. Oh. The underdog. Nobody. Nobody. I'm not even sure his family picked him to win. That's where he was at. I, I spoke to, I'm going to give you a story in a minute. I spoke to all his mates actually at the airport over there when they were coming back. And I mean, they were, they were great, great. Did you see everybody when you were I there? I saw everybody, mate. You know what? I've like, I got in the office. I got in the office, what? An hour ago? <laughs> you were at the building. And the whole building, 17 floors on there. Yeah, uh, yeah I, spoke, I just thought it was a brilliant performance. By, we, I had breakfast with him the following morning, actually, Willie. And he was there with Shelley Finkel and whatnot. And I said to him, listen, mate, I'm not going to lie to you. It's all about opportunity. I didn't think you was good enough to do it. Craig Richards has been there, seen it, done it. Boatsy, been there with Bivol, pushed Bivol all the way. And I thought experience would get the better of you. And you dealt with it. I mean, coming off... If you go back four fights and you look at the fight against Lennox Clark, where he lost in five rounds, and he told me the reasons for that, and fair play to him, he didn't speak up because he said, look, I don't want people thinking, oh, it's an excuse. It's an excuse. He said, I just left that where it was. Lost in five rounds. You go, was well, that his level? Great world amateur champion. Looked like he was going to be the next big thing. Then loses to Lennox Clark. You go, right, this is probably where he's at. He gets the opportunity against Craig Richards. The experience goes in there. Boy, did he deliver. What a performance. Controlled the fight, really. Beating Richards to the punch. Controlled the fight, really, from the opening bell. Wide decision as well, which it should have been. What a performance from Hutchinson. Best performance of his professional career, and he went back to his amateur style to do it. He outfoxed and outboxed poor Craig Richards, who was stuck in the mud, who was static, and the wily fox of Shelley Finkel has been telling me about Willie Hutchinson for a long time. I, I go back a long way with Shelley. We had, have lunch every now and again. And uh, I remember him saying to me that he was, uh, was going to sign up Willie Hutchinson. I thought, well, that's a bit odd, this Scottish fighter, this amateur. And uh, he said, yeah, I like him. And he's normally pretty good. Um, Brian Peters is another one that picks his fighters very well. He obviously had Ray Ford yeah. on the night. But um, yeah, Willie was, was, was wonderful, wasn't he? I love the way he switched styles early. The orthodox southpaw, the movement was great. And uh, yeah, the, the rounds, he just ran away with the rounds. And, mm. and Craig woke up way too late. He got back in a little, had a couple of spells. But yeah, it was a great performance by Willie Hutchison. He was so passionate about yeah. the whole uh, he was. match from v Queensbury competition, uh, about the, the points, about the camaraderie, about the team spirit of it all. And I'm really pleased for him because he's 
proved a point and uh, obviously there's talk of the Joshua Boazzi fight now. That'll be another really interesting fight if they could make that on September well, listen, the 21st. And so as you say that this morning, the WBO broke the news that Joshua Boazzi, Willie Hutchinson for the WBO interim world title as they haven't heard anything from Anthony Yard. He didn't respond to their last ruling. So that's what's where happened it's, there. I really don't know what's happened there. I Come mean, on, you've you got your finger on the pulse. I have, mate, and I, like, I just can't work it out. I go, like, he's just got himself into that position, Yard, where he's there, he's there for the super fights, and now things seem to be breaking away a little bit. I don't know what's going on with the Frank Warren situation. We had Frank Warren on Talk Sport. Frank said, Spence, you know as much as me. Now, all of a sudden... He doesn't seem to want to be a part of that. I think that he tweeted today as well, and to the yard that he is now a free agent. Yep. So I don't know where that is. I've not had a chance to Because Frank speak Warren's talking very highly of him still. Yeah, exactly. And I've not spoke to Frank. Obviously, we've just got off the plane, so be interested to have a follow-up with that. But yeah, that's what it is. And so now the WBO order, Willie Hutchinson. That's what this is all about, Adam. That's what I love about this game, right? About opportunity and how you take that opportunity like he did there against Craig Richards took the opportunity won the fight reminds me in many ways of when you go back to Steve Robinson John Davison where he got a phone call 24 hours before Cinderella do you man. want the fight yep. do you want the fight for the WBO Working in the warehouse. title <laughs> goes in there boom rips a title from him and his career just Nine defences, didn't yeah, he have absolutely. something like that? Mad. Yeah. Crazy. Well, just... You've got to take your opportunities. And also, mm. it got the ball rolling, didn't it, for Team Queensbury in a big way because most felt Craig Richards, and that would have helped yeah. match him with some of the fights later on. And you feel sometimes in the team competition that it's that first, get that sort of wins on the board. And Hutchinson doing that and sort of passing the baton to Nick Ball yeah. gave them a little bit of momentum. So, yeah, it was a great night for Willie Hutchinson. I'm it really was. pleased for him. And I'd love to see him go into a, a Boazzi fight. And don't know if he could become a world champion. A performance like that, it was, he boxed beautifully. Um, Craig Richards will be disappointed. Back to the drawing board. He's only you know, lost against the likes of Bivol mm -hmm. and, and, and Boazzi. And, and at short notice, he's, he's take, he took his chance against uh, Frank Buglioni, didn't he? Uh, way back, but yeah, he'll be really disappointed, Spider. He had a lot of support. His sisters, oh my word, the but noise. Was... I remember the, the, the screams, are, yeah, they're yeah. just unbelievable, Craig Richards' fans. Yeah, they were, well, so is Willie Hutchinson's. <laughs> I, saw his, <laughs> I saw his fans and his family. They, at must the have been they must have been near you, but I was near the Craig Richards no, fans. I saw at the airport. Oh, I saw at the airport, and they were still continuing. Isn't that on. great, though? And I saw it at the airport, and I thought, oh, here we go, because I'm number one. I've got to go walk past. <laughs> I went against him, and this is what it's going to be. Did you want to dunk around the side? The wrong one. <laughs> No, they were brilliant, mate. They was there and they was like spans. We listened to talk sport all the time. And of course, you're going to pick the other guy because the other guy's got the experience. Willie recognised that. It's all about, you know, opportunity. And he took it. And I went, and that's what the game's all about. That's what I love about this sport. Nothing's personal. It's an opinion. You've got one. I've of got course. one. People have got one. We have to go one way or the other. Willie Hutchinson proved not just us wrong, everybody wrong. Fair play to him. Brilliant performance. And the way he did it, the yeah. manner of victory, he changed his style. That's what I liked. He went back because yeah. he was a good amateur. He went yeah. back to that and he just, his movement was fantastic. Yeah, he had to hang on a little bit down the stretch, but um, mm. you know, as you do in, in those sort of yeah. fights, and Richards came back at him, but it was way too late for Craig Richards, and it was a it was a lovely performance by Willie Hutchinson, almost like painting a tapestry. <laughs> Overall experience of the week out in Saudi Arabia, enjoy it. Amazing, loved it, absolutely uh, incredible. The showcase uh, going into the Boulevard City with with Times Square. I mean, it took me back mm. to. Those days with Prince Nassim Mohammed in the real Times Square with the, 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 the posters up there. And now it's, it's, the, it's the LED. I see it was unbelievable. Mm. Or like, like the Vegas Strip. You know, you saw Frank and Eddie's face everywhere. And for me still, that bizarre, surreal sort of moment of, of Frank and Eddie not only sort of sitting next to each other and talking to each other, but sort of taking on each other. Mm. It's just... It's, boxing has just, just gone like that. It's, yeah. it's just... It's incredible. Mm. Um, you, you wind back a year and a half, two years. I just, you never, ever have thought this would happen. Yeah. And it's happening and things are changing almost every time. Mm. It's like they, there's one big event. Then there's another one. Then there's some, another twist. Then you're going to get a, yeah. a better undercard or there's going to be some other competition. You just know that they're coming up with different things all the time, mm. the creativity, the entertainment, and the fact that, you know, talk sport were welcomed in. Yeah. Jim White was brought over. You know, Turkey Al-Sheikh has, has got the people around him. He's 
He's a big boxing fan Huge. and he watches everything. He watches this. He does. And True Geordie bringing him over. What a, what a strength yeah. of genius that is. What a nice geezer, by the way. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice yeah. and very good as well. He and is. appeals to another audience. Yeah. And that's what I like. I remember back when we did Logan Paul and KSI. And um, I, I was, I think that day was, was also, no, I think that, no, I, yeah, that, that day when Eddie said KSI and Logan Paul were putting on on Sky. And I was like, really? It was like, okay, the, the trade fans aren't going to be too happy but it appeals to another audience yeah. because when KSI fought Joe Weller, do you remember that? You were involved in that. I was that, involved in both of them that, shows. You that, was, that, was the yeah. same, that was the same night as Lawrence Okoli and Isaac Chamberlain fought. Mm. I remember saying to my son Oscar a few years ago, he must have been 10, 11 at the time, I said to Oscar, who's going to win tonight, Okoli or Chamberlain? He said, mm. who are they? Yeah. I said, what about, he said, KSI wins tonight. I didn't yeah. know what he was talking about. And suddenly you see different forms of entertainment. You've got to appeal to the young. And that's what they're doing, you know, bringing the, yeah. the YouTubers in, bringing the different ways in, bringing the different competitions. Recognising the vision. Recognising the vision, the changing of the times. It's an entertainment world that we now live in. And like you say, no, you know, you look at... You look at Turkey Ellis Sheikh and you look at the princes over there now, they're a younger generation. They're recognising that there is change. While they're invested in boxing and, and interested and fascinated, you know, I think Turkey's favourite fighter is Mark Chamberlain, isn't it? <laughs> and I think, I think he just loves the sport. Yeah. He watches you, you on the watch along and, you know, do you, know what? you had a good chat with him. It's great. What? How are you feeling right now? Right now? Right at this moment? Absolutely buzzed. I, I, no, but the reason I say that is because you've literally just got off the plane, you've flown through the night, got off the plane, as I did, I landed two hours before you, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, a little bit of sleep deprivation, feeling a little bit tired, I've got, I've just, I've just feel like someone's recharged my battery sitting here talking with you. Well, I've loved it. That's what we do. Yeah. We just work off each other. We've known each other 25, 30 years. There's a chemistry, Spencer. You know, we've <laughs> been and seen so many fights around the world and we're experiencing this new generation, this revolution in a way. And they've, you know, they've making the big fights and they're fights that we missed. We missed out on AJ Wilder. You know, what? I think if mm. Turkey al Sheikh had been around four or five years ago, we definitely would have had that fight. Sure. You know, sure. and, and I missed a time out of boxing through my illness. And, you know, that time it changed. You know, you can't sit still. And, and, and when I came back, wow, you know, it was already sort of moving forward. Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to go to, I think, three of the big Saudi shows recently. And uh, I've enjoyed every one, even the AJ Vanin you're night. Like, you're like the top boxers right now, aren't you? You've got, the, you've got that adaptability. You've been away, you come back, you've seen what's going on and done. But listen, I could talk to you all night, Adam. You know that. You know that. But it's, um, yeah, we have to go, mate. We've got to go home. Really? Have a little bit of sleep. Have we? You know, it's been a long time. And I need a little bit of kip, you know? Do you? You don't, do you? Well, I have to look after myself. I've got to, I've got, I've got to, listen, I've recovered from cancer, Spencer. I've exactly. got to go back, rest up, see the kids, see the family. Looking Brilliant. forward to it. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to chat again soon. Well, thanks so much for having me, mate. That's it for episode number 75 of Talk Boxing. Until next week, I'll see you then.